What is going on, everybody? This is the fourth Dirty Dozen Trap video, and this is on my favorite opening for black, the Carol Kahn defense. And we are going to be showcasing traps for white and black. And the first one is in the main line, where white plays e4. Black responds with c6, the Carol Kahn. White grabs the center with d4, and black finishes the opening with d5. Instead of doing the advanced variation, or exchange variation, or uh, the fantasy, or 101 other ones, goes with the old school main line, knight to c3. And when black captures the e-pawn, and white recaptures the e-pawn with the knight to jump e4. Black plays the Karpov variation with knight to d7. Karpov was the world champion after Bobby Fischer reigned for 10 years. I think it was 75 to 85? 1975 to 1985? Somewhere around there. And... Oh, for the record, he didn't beat Fisher. They just couldn't agree to terms on the match and basically got it by default. Black doesn't know what they're doing. White can play queen to e2. And if black just plays a standard move, let's just say something like knight to f6, that is game over with the jump of knight to d6. A lot of moves also work, like if they go to Fianchetto, their bishop, same thing. Um, there's probably a, a list of moves. Moves that it wouldn't work on is if they move their e-pawn, either up one or two. If they move their knight again in any direction, actually. And last but not least, what else wouldn't work? And if they move their queen, if they develop their queen with a check or something, it's obviously not going to work. But I hope that you enjoy the simple trap where it's checkmate on move six. And I'll catch you on the next. This is another beauty for white. White plays d4. Black plays d5. White plays knight c3, and black will capture e-pawn with d-pawn. White will re-scoop it up with the knight, now on e4. And if black plays the Karpov variation with knight d7, you can play the funky-looking move, and it's not disadvantageous to your uh, analysis or computer evaluation, is knight g5. Doesn't make much sense to open up your, uh, you know, or for Black's perspective, open up on a diagonal for your king by pushing the F-pawn. Just like Ben Feingold. Never play F3 or F6. So you want to kick it out with the H-pawn. And if that's the case, you can try tricking them with the trap Knight E6. And if they take it, checkmate in two. Bring your queen to h5 check, and they only got one piece to block it with, the g-pawn to g6. And your queen comes in and scoops up the g6 pawn with checkmate. This is very similar to one of the previous traps. d4, d5, knight c3. D takes E, and then knight takes E4. And this is the Karpov variation, knight D7, and the modern variation of the Karpov, knight G5. We covered the trap where the knight gets kicked immediately and comes here, and if it's captured, the queen can swing to H5 for the checkmate. But in this version, the knight comes to f6 protecting that vital h5 square 
if this is the case, we bring the bishop right to d3. And if they try to kick the knight now, we go ahead and jump the knight, like previously, to e6. And if the knight's captured on e6, now we can bring the bishop to g6 for the checkmate. Piggybacking off the last trap. Let's speed this up. e4, e5, knight c3, d takes e, knight takes e4, carpa variation, knight d7, knight g5, h6, and knight e6. Now the knight is attacking the queen on d8. So if... Black doesn't lose the game immediately like the last trap, capturing the knight with the f-pawn. The black queen has to boogie. And it's only got two safe squares. It's got b6 and a5. a5 comes with check. And white will defend the king with moving the bishop to d2, kicking it back. And the knight has... To, or the queen has to keep an eye on the c7 square because the knight is threatening a fork for the king and rook. So the only safe square is queen to b6. Very important here. Very important move that white plays. Bishop d3. Black is more than welcome to capture that knight now because it's not checkmate. If the queen were to move over, the king could move to the d-square now. So if black does capture the knight on e6, you got another trap trick up your sleeve. You have queen to h5 check. And if the king moves right away without blocking the check... To d8, now you can move your bishop to a5, pinning the queen to the king. And no matter what black does, you're going to win the queen. If the queen captures the bishop on a5, you slide across your queen from one end to the other on the h file. Or the fifth file. Row. Fifth row. And it was so important to play this bishop move right here. Bishop f1 to d3. Because if black blocks the check, you can now capture that pawn that they blocked it with on g6 with your bishop. Now they must move their king, and you still have that pin on a5. Because if that bishop wasn't there, you would have to capture that pawn with your queen. And now your queen no longer controls the fifth row, and you would not be able to pin the queen and king. There you have it. Hi-ho, hi-ho. Once again, we meet. Main line. White pushes d4, given the center, and black makes some pressure with d5. Old classic variation, knight to c3. And black captures the e-pawn with the d-pawn. White picks it up with knight to e4. And there's three variations from here. We already discussed the Karpov with the first trap. The most common line is bishop to f5. And then the knight usually scoops back to g3. Then there's a line I play. I love it. Uh, knight to f6. If you've never played this variation and you play the caro, give it a try. Uh, I do have a tutorial on this variation. Check out my mega tutorial, uh, version volume 2. And here we go. So from here, a logical move that white can play is queen to d3. It serves good purpose, covers the queen and uh, covers the knight and if the knight is picked up it can recapture the queen and it still defends the d4 pawn so from here what can happen is if black 
tries pinning that knight with the bishop, which looks like a logical move, especially in blitz. Huge mistake. Your knight can go ahead and capture their knight on f6, and that comes with check. And regardless of how they kill it with the e-pawn or the g-pawn, you go ahead and pick up the bishop with your queen. Uh, queen capture f5. You get two minors for your minor, and you are up a whole minor piece. And, you know, depending on which pawn they capture with, their uh, middle is nice and exposed, and you have a centralized queen. Both bishops of yours are ready to come out. So, there's one, and the next trap is very similar. I should just mush it in with this, but I'm going to separate it. Just like the last trap, we'll speed up. White plays d4, black plays d5, white plays knight c3, black plays d captures e, white plays knight captures e4, and black plays the version I play out of the three lines we talked about with knight f6. And from here's, you also play queen to d3. Very similar, just like the last trap. Instead of bringing out the bishop, if black plays the move, uh, another natural move looking, uh, pawn to e5, what you can do is go ahead and capture that e-pawn with your d-pawn, attacking the knight. And rather than having to move the knight, black has a nice resource of swinging the queen to a5, checking the king. And you go ahead and block that check with your bishop development to d2. And then they can go ahead and slide their queen over to e5, picking up that pawn, getting rid of the threat against uh, their knight. So if from here, you can count something. The white knight is pinned. And you have, they have... Two attackers on your knight. They got the queen attacking it and the knight attacking it. And you can't move it currently. So from here, uh, you can set a trap. You go ahead and castle. Now, they won't obviously capture the knight with their queen because then you would swing over the rook and their queen would be pinned. So... If they're going to capture it, they're going to capture it with their knight. And that is an awesome, awesome fucking mistake. Because you can finish the game with a sick combo. First, sacrificing the queen. Queen to d8. Check. They have no other move but to capture your queen with their king. King captures queen on d8. And that is when you swing your bishop now with a discovered double check. Bishop g5. They got two things they could do. They got two moves they can run with. Remind you, a double check can't be blocked. You have to run. If the king tries escaping through the c7 path, you go ahead and move your bishop to d8 checkmate. And if they move their king to e8, Back to where they started. You swing in the rook to d8. And that is also the shekelimate. That's a nice little trapper for you. And on to the next. This next trap comes out of the two knights variation. Where the knight comes to c3 right away. Instead of pushing at d4. Black will go ahead and push d5. And you go ahead and bring your knight out to f3. If black captures your e-pawn with their d-pawn, you recapture with your knight. That was on c3. And they can go ahead and bring in uh, the bishop attacking the knight on e4. So the knight... Retreats to g3, attacking the bishop. Bishop can go ahead and pin the other knight now. That's on f3 by moving it to g4. 
that's the case, go ahead and move your bishop to c4. And uh, this is where some magic can happen. If black plays a move like knight to d7, you can go ahead and... Move your knight to either e5, which would be the worst the option, or g5 is the better. And if they take the bait and snag your queen with the bishop, it would be game over. Because your bishop can capture the f7 pawn, and that is victory. This trap is a quick one. White plays d4, black plays d5, and white will play bishop to d3. And if black plays knight f6, just showing it's a trap, you can push e5. And if you look at all the squares, uh, they can move back. Instant death by queen. Go here. They're going to get kicked. And now they have no good squares other than h6. And then their pawn structure would be messed up. So they're not going to take that route most likely. If they play e4, they're going to get kicked. And now they absolutely move the knight. Lose the knight. So... The only good option for them, which appears good, is either back to the starting sp spot or knight d7. And if they played knight d7, you just march up your e-pawn once again. They're not going to move their knight again, because then you would force their king out. So, most likely they're going to capture the e-pawn. And if that's the case... You got queen h5 check. They have to block with the g pawn to g6. And then you got two ways to go out. You can go fancy fancy with queen capture g6. They got to recapture with the h pawn. And then you can finish them off with checkmate bishop g6. Or you can go with the bishop first. Bishop capture g6. H captures g. And then queen captures g6, checkmate. And this variation is the braider variation. d3 is pushed, not d4. Black will play d5. And you bring your knight out to f3. d captures e. And you will jump your knight to g5 to safety. e will capture d now. And you recapture the d-pawn with your bishop. They try to kick out your knight. You sack it on f7. And if the king takes it, it's checkmate in 6. Here are all the variations. You got queen, h5, check. If the pawn blocks, instant checkmate. The other options are... Uh, queen e6. Oh, king e6, sorry. If that's the case, bring your queen to f5. And they only have one option to bring it to d6. And you bring your bishop to f4. And now they have one option. Playing e5. You go ahead and Take it with your, uh, I'm sorry, queen. And if that happens, they will play king d7. And then you can play bishop f5 for checkmate. And if they run to f6, then you have... What do we got? Uh, queen g6, forcing them to e5. 
Then you got bishop f4. If they capture your bishop, you got queen g3 checkmate. If they go d4, you got bishop e3 check. And then if they go d5, you got c4. And they're forced to e5. And then you got f4, checkmate. And if they go to e5 first, you play f4. And they're forced to d5. And then you play c4, checkmate. And if they play d5 off the bat, then you have queen e4 check, forcing them to c5. Then you got queen c4 check, forcing them to b6. And then you got queen b4 checkmate. And that would be how the cookie crumbles. Starting off with the first trap for black. Same main line. White pushes d4. Black pushes d5. White develops knight to c3. Black takes the e-pawn with the d-pawn. White captures the e4 pawn with the knight. And black takes the line of knight to f6. And if white doesn't want to exchange knights... The best move for them is to back out to g3 with the knight. This is when you can march your h-pawn to h5, looking to march h4. And white may come in and attack your knight on f6 with a bishop move to g5. And if this is the case, here comes the good one. This is a great trap, guys. Go ahead and move the pawn to h4, attacking the knight. And white may calculate bishop take knight, pawn take knight, and then they can move the bishop to e5, saving the day. Because now the pawn capturing the h2 pawn is attacked twice now. It's got their rook and bishop. But you have an awesome resource. Black Knight on f6 will fall, as we said, with the bishop capturing it. And white will capture the knight, evening the score on g3. White will go ahead and move the bishop to e5. And this is when you pull the trigger. Rook capture pawn on h2. They're probably thinking that's dumb because everything is okay. You know, rook take rook, pawn take rook, and then the bishop saves the day. But you have this awesome move. After rook capture rook, you do not capture with the pawn. You play queen a5 check. Doesn't matter how they block. If they block it with the pawn. We'll discuss the bishop as well. But if they block it with the pawn. You go ahead and you snag that bishop with check. And you take away that attacker on that pawn now. So regardless of how they uh block the check or most logical thing is to capture the queen you go ahead and capture the rook on h2 with the pawn and that'll promote to queen there's nothing that they can do to stop it because you will capture the knight and get a queen and they can't do something like move the queen out because then you're just gonna promote on the g file and if they move the knight, regardless of where they do it, you're going to go ahead and promote in the corner. And backing up here, if they do the really horrible thing and they decide to block with the queen, you can play the move pawn captures f2 check. And 
obviously the king would not want to capture the pawn because then you're going to win their queen with check. And uh, if they move to somewhere like, I don't know, D, D1, sorry, it's, it's hard to calculate here. You can come in with queen captures their queen on D2, and after they recapture, you get their knight and promote to a queen with your F pawn on G1. And the only other square, I guess, they can run to besides capture or over is if they try E2. Uh, you can do the same thing. Queen captures queen on D2. Once they take it, you go ahead and get your queen. Just curious. I think also you could probably what? Nope, that don't work. Nope, that don't work either. Eh, worth checking out. Yep, so lovely little trap hidden, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next. This is one of the few traps for black in the CarolCon, and it's pretty quick, actually. It's uh, E4, C6, D4, D5, and then it's the advanced variation. So white pushes E5. Go ahead and get your bishop outside the pawn chain with bishop f5. And white's looking to trade off with bishop d3. So you want to go ahead and capture the bishop on d3. And white will recapture with the queen to d3. That's when we can close up the pawn structure with e6. And white will move the knight to e2, looking to castle. And the best response to that is pawn to c5, looking for a pawn break and to create tension. And from here, white will defend the d-pawn with pushing c3. And you want to go ahead and move your knight to e7, looking to jump it to f5 in the future. And... White's queen will move to b5. And you want to defend everything. Your loose b7 pawn and block the check with pushing your queen to d7. And if white makes the mistake of capturing the unprotected pawn on c5, they fell for the trap and... The queen is trapped. You can bring your knight to f5. And the queen only has one square, which is safe. That is the a5 square. And all you have to do is push your b pawn to b6. And that queen is trapped. We're going to be wrapping this up with one of the most common traps that everyone avoids if you play the carol con it's mostly part of all your lines and that is after the first move white pushes d4 and black pushes d5 white pushes e5 the advanced variation and in the advanced variation black is in a hurry to get their pawn uh, structure closed and get their bishop outside so they push bishop f Five. And white, one of their main mojos, their stilo, is pawn to h4. And if black is careless and closes their pawn structure without thinking, you can push g4 and trap the bishop. The only thing you can really do at this point is try to threaten the rook by putting the bishop on e4, but then you can just push your f-pawn to f3, hitting the bishop again. And it can move to g6 for its final, I guess, uh, you know, its final stand. And you can push h5, totally trapping it. 
its best option to get something out of it is to take your H pawn with the bishop, and it's close. The computer, it's equal. You can take it with the rook or the pawn. It's either you're going to lose a tempo if you take it with the rook because it'll get hit and you got to move it back somewhere, or if you take it with the pawn, you're going to have an isolated flank pawn. And that'll wrap it up. Oh, and I will mention also, the bishop could uh, kamikaze and take out your c-pawn as well. So that is definitely uh, the h h-pawn push is well known. And if you're on the receiving end, black, anytime you see white push h4, push h5. Yeah, I know one of the lines that says H6 is better. Computers don't know it all. Play H5. And I do appreciate you guys, and I hope that you made it this far. I'll catch you on the next.